Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to be doing a review on the M1 MacBook Pro four months later. Now it's been four months for the rest of the world, it's been three months for me. I had to wait like a month and a half for some reason to get my Mac. I have that whole thing in my unboxing video, so if you want to go check out the unboxing, I'll have it in the cards up top for you guys to go check out. Right now I have a dbrand skin on here, hence the MacBook being orange, but let's get started. So this laptop for the three months I've been using it, I've absolutely loved it. It's my favorite computer of all time. Okay, thanks for watching my review. Comment down below, give it a like. No, but seriously, I really love this computer and you should definitely subscribe and click on the bell notification button so you don't miss out on any other videos. Let's start off with a backstory. We all love a backstory. This review is coming to you from someone who's never had a top spec Mac in her life. I had my first Mac, which was a 2011 MacBook Pro or 2012, I forget. It was 17 inches and I got it in 2019, 20, 2017. So, not the best dated one. It was like five years, you know, not the greatest and it didn't even work properly. I had it for like a month. It broke. It's whatever. Then in 2018, beginning 2019, I got a 12 inch MacBook second hand and I mean it was a great laptop to have but whenever I tried to throw like intense editing at it or anything that really required any great performance it just it didn't work that great for me especially since I wanted to upgrade on my editing and all I could use on that thing was iMovie which has the bare minimum amount of features because Final Cut Pro would just fry that computer completely. So then I opted for an 11 inch iPad Pro. Now don't get me wrong, that was the best thing I could have done at that time. I absolutely love the iPad, I still love it. You can see it right there. It's one of my favorite devices of all time from Apple. It was great for editing on a Luma Fusion, which I did for about two years or something. And it was great for work related things. I was at school at the time, all of it just worked seamlessly at the time but then as I was looking to upgrade to Final Cut Pro so I had to get a Mac I heard about the M1 Macs coming out and I was beyond excited to say I was excited was an understatement while watching that keynote now let's recap that event that keynote and all the claims that Apple made they were pretty vague but I was still excited so Apple claimed you would get two times faster CPU performance two times faster GPU performance 15 times faster machine learning performance. They claimed also 17 hours of web browsing for battery as well as 20 hours of movie playback. Now all these are very hard to prove, I guess, especially like the amount of hours that they're telling you. I mean, who's going to sit 20 hours in front of their computer just watching video? So it's pretty hard to like prove, but as far as I've tested out my Mac, Battery life is insane. I could get about eight to 10 hours a day with editing, going on Photoshop, all that kind of stuff. I get about 10 hours. So then just at the end of the workday, just plug it in and it's fine. Some days, you know, you can get even more if you don't use it a lot. So battery is insane on this thing. I have no complaints at all with battery life. Now for these M1 Macs, you have three different apps. So you have the universal apps, which are the apps that are optimized for M1, Apple Silicon, they work amazing, no problem. And usually these are Apple apps. So you have Final Cut Pro, Pages, Safari, all that stuff. So these work seamlessly. They're optimized for Silicon M1 Mac. Then you have apps that are still Intel based and the code has not been rewritten so that it will work on Apple Silicon Macs. So they have to run through Rosetta 2, but these are still great. So for instance, most of the Adobe apps like Photoshop, Lightroom, they do are not optimized for Mac with M1 chips, but they still run really fast. So I have not gotten any complaints from that. So I have Photoshop and Lightroom that I mostly work in. And for someone who's never worked on it, it's pretty great. So I can't imagine if it's optimized, how great it will be then. So yeah, Photoshop and all the Adobe things. And obviously there are other apps as well, but those are just the ones I mostly use. They're still running great even though they're not optimized for M1 chips. And then the last type of app is iPhone and iPad apps. Now I'm gonna be honest, I don't really think I would ever download some of those apps. I mean, I'm sure there are people who love that, like playing Among Us, but I just don't think like the user interface is still not the same as on, a, as on an iPhone and iPad. So it still has that kind of weird 
it's not touch bar and these are kind of optimized for touch and sizes are sometimes a bit weird so I just don't have the desire to get any of those apps on my Mac. I mean, if it's great that we have that option, I just don't think I'm gonna be using it necessarily. But I mean, for people who like having that on their Macs, it's still great that we have that, like I said. I, I just don't usually have like games or anything like that. And just like other of the apps, I have pretty minimal apps. By the way, I have a video on what's on my Mac if you wanna check that out, again, on the eye up top. So let's get back on my timeline. So I ordered the M1 MacBook Pro, it got here about a month and a half later, end of December, beginning January, but I got the space gray one, like I mentioned, and 256 gigabytes of storage, as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now the problem with my order was the 16 gigabytes of RAM. In South Africa, you need to ship it from the US to get it here. If I wanted the eight gig RAM, it would have been fast. I would have got it in immediately, but I did not know that at the time. Looking back, I really wish I did get a bit more storage. The 256 is great, it still works, but it just fills up the laptop pretty quickly. I do have an SSD that I can use with it, so it's not like a problem that I don't have, I have to delete all my files or anything. I just think it would have been more convenient to have more storage and it not full up as quickly, especially with Final Cut, it goes very quickly. So for those of you who are interested in some of the specs for the M1 chip, it has eight core CPU, which is four, cores for efficiency and four cores for performance and then we also have an eight core gpu as well as a 16 core neural engine so powerful stuff amazing stuff that's all i can say really about it so for the ports on this laptop we have two usb-c ports on the one side so that's great and then the other side we have a single headphone jack which i use a lot for editing i do wish we had a few more ports that would have been nice and um yeah dongle life it's fine i've accepted it it's just all i'm asking is an sd card slot that's all i'm asking for but it is what it is now for this part of the computer so that's the touch bar the keyboard the trackpad i absolutely love all of it we have the beloved scissor switch keys which is such a step up from the butterfly keys i mean how did we ever think that was okay but you know we have it, it's amazing. The typing experience is just phenomenal. That's all I can say about it. Then we have the touch bar, which I know is a sensitive subject. I don't mind the touch bar personally. I use it often. I don't use it like all the time, but for some of the things that are on there, like especially like in Photoshop, I use it often. It's still convenient to have. I don't really have a problem with it. It's not like a sore thumb for me or anything. Then we have the fingerprint scanner, which I love, so that it's really convenient when having to like get access to passwords and things like that. And just for privacy overall with your Mac, it's a game changer. So yeah, the touch ID is just great. And then I feel like the trackpad is always been like one of the great things about all Apple's Macs. So it's huge and it's smooth, it's buttery smooth, it's fast and reactive, gestures are very convenient and easy to use and remember. I love Apple's trackpad and it's like I said, it's huge. So there's no problem there. Now we have to mention this. It's just, it's what it is, it's Apple's webcam. It's 720p, it's not great. It's not good at all whatsoever. They do have that new process, image processing that they're trying with this, but I feel like just rather opt for a better camera. It is sad that we still have a 720p camera on a 2020 Mac. I mean, I know everyone's pointing it out, but it's just, it's there. It's right there and everyone's using webcams now. I luckily don't use it that often, but I know people with Zoom, I mean, you don't want people, you don't want to look all groggy on camera when you're already feeling groggy on camera. So yeah, okay, webcam could have been better, but what can you do? The microphone though, pretty impressive. If you need to do a voiceover in a pinch, you have it there, they're not terrible. I still think like they're very impressive. I was thoroughly impressed with the microphones. This is my microphone test on the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip, and I mean, it's pretty decent. Now for more of my personal experience with the Mac, I feel like that's where it all comes down to, is your personal experience, how you found all your workflows and everything on this. So for me, it's been a huge step up from my iPad. Final Cut Pro has been a big step up. I know this video isn't about Final Cut Pro, but that's like what I spend 80% of my time on on this thing is Final Cut Pro or Photoshop. It runs super smooth on this Mac, especially since it is optimized for silicon. I've had maybe one or two hiccups or you know times where it just buffers, but 
I mean, that was to be expected. I never ex expected like total smooth performance, but so far I have no complaints whatsoever with that. And I promise you, I think I've only heard the fans on this thing once. I'm pretty sure maybe once, maybe twice, maybe, but so far as I can remember once I've heard them and some editing like does a lot because I usually have Final Cut Pro, Photoshop and Lightroom open at the same time, two of the apps which are not optimized yet. And like I said, only once I've heard these fans, it's like, are they even in here or something? Like I've never really heard them. I also recently redid my website, link in the description if you want to check it out. But that experience, redoing all those things, making the designs on Photoshop, it was such a great experience for me. I mean, it was so many hours in Photoshop, so many hours, and Lightroom, and just going back and forth between like web browser and the website, and then back to Photoshop. And it was such, a, like I said, a pleasant experience, which is like, it, that's all it's about, is having your workflow and not having too many interruptions or anything within it. It's just something that's really great. So overall, my probably biased opinion is this is the best piece of hardware that I've ever invested in. And I would recommend it to any creator who's looking for a good laptop. Now, obviously there are some cases where the Pro might not be the best. Maybe the Air is better. Um, or if you're like a big Pro, probably not. But I mean, overall, I really can recommend this to anyone who's looking for a good computer and has the budget to spend. I mean, these do so great and they're so much better than the ones before with the same price. So yeah, I absolutely love this laptop. Like I said, pretty biased opinion of mine, but I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm trying to be like unbiased and like think truly like what is like the bad parts just to like warn people, but there really isn't much apart from the webcam and ports, lack of ports. And maybe the bezels, but that really isn't that big of a deal to me, but maybe the bezels as well. But yeah, that's my review. Leave me a comment down below telling me what your thoughts are and scream at me if you think I'm being too biased. I'm just, I wanted to hear you guys' opinion in the comments below. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Definitely subscribe by clicking on the icon on the screen. Click on the playlist to see all of my other Mac related videos and click on the video to my previously uploaded video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.